Good morning, everybody. Welcome and thank you, thank you for joining us today on this special day. Just a couple of press conference format reminders. Coach Wilbur Ellis will lead us in a word of prayer, followed by President Rick Gallo making a few remarks. Vice President for Intercollegiate Athletics, Dr. Travion Scott, will make a few remarks and then we'll introduce the new head football coach. There will be a presentation and we will do that off to the left side of the podium with Coach Jackson, Dr. Scott, and President Gallo. Once that presentation is done, Coach Jackson will come forward to the podium and make a few remarks. He will then take a question and answer session for 15 minutes with members of the media. If you can, when asking a question, raise your hand and please identify yourself and your organization so that Coach Jackson knows who he is talking to. In addition, we will hold an interview session directly to the right in front of the backdrop with members of the media immediately following today's press conference. So go ahead and silence your cell phones if you haven't done so already, and we will go ahead and get started. At this time, I would like to bring up Coach Wilbur Ellis, who will lead us in a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pause for a moment to give thanks and praise to you. We thank you, Almighty God, for this day that you have given to us. Help us to be humble and help us to be able to receive. But most of all, help us to stop, look, and listen to you. Oh God, I ask you to bless those that are in our attendance this morning. I bless, I bless Gramlin State University. Touch and open her and let her know the things that she needs to do to continue to be successful. Help us to be able to unite in our communities and bring love and peace and respect for one another. Oh God, I pray upon Coach Jackson, who's coming to us, to be able to take the torch and move on. Oh God, I pray right now for those pioneers and those founding fathers who made it possible for us to be here today. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, help us to be humble. Help us to be directed by you in the spirit of Jesus. I pray this prayer, and they all said, Amen. Thank you, Coach Ellis, for that outstanding word of prayer. Now, I would like to bring up the 10th president of Grambling State University, Mr. Rick Gallo, for his remarks. Thank you, Brian, and uh, thank you, Coach Ellis, for, for always being uh, in the room and always uh, eliciting uh, God's blessing on, on everything that, that we've been doing. It's such an amazing day uh, at Grambling, and to see students represented here, uh, to see faculty, staff, to see alumni, to see uh, former G-men who've assembled today. Uh, it is great to see everyone who's come today uh, to witness the naming of uh, the new leader of our football program. Now, just a little over six months ago, uh, we had a, an announcement uh, up in the foyer naming the inaugural Vice President of Intercollegiate Athletics, Dr. Travion Scott, uh, as our new leader of all of athletics. And the charge to Dr. Scott was to lead, to be transformative in his leadership. And I'm certainly very grateful that at this time we do have a transformational leader in the Department of Athletics who is seeing not just what's in front of us, but has the vision to be able to see over the horizon and to see around the curve to know that leadership is so incredibly important to this institution and to make the decisions that are necessary to really make Grambling all that we know that it can, should, and will be. 
So without further ado, I want to present to you now our inaugural Vice President of Intercollegiate Athletics, Dr. Travion Scott, who has an exciting announcement to make. Dr. Scott. Good morning. Indeed, it is an exciting day. I want to thank everyone for being here today as we welcome our new head football coach, Hugh Jackson. But before we get started, I want to thank President Gallo for his leadership and for his support throughout this process. I've said since our first day on this job that I believe in Gramlin State University. I believe that Gramlin State University will continue to do great things. And I meant it for the entire university. If we move in the same direction, there's nothing we can't achieve. There's no question President Gallo, as you all have heard, has us rowing in the same direction. I'm thrilled about where we're headed as a university under his leadership and honored to play my small part in this wonderful institution. I'd also like to thank Dr. Jim Henderson President of the University of Louisiana System, as well as the University of Louisiana System Board of Supervisors for their continued support. We also couldn't do it without the work and support of our executive cabinet, Attorney Pena Moses, Dr. Rudolph Ellis, Ms. Sheila Fawcett, Ms. Melanie Jones, who couldn't be with us today, and Chief of Staff, Ms. Jasmine Cherry. Finally, and most importantly to me, I'd like to thank the entire athletic staff for their tireless work in helping land a phenomenal leader to guide the G-Men into the future. Terrence Bradford, Wanda Curry, Brian Howard, Carmen King, Jared Ratliff, Taylor Stewart, Kanita Stokes, Laney Alphonse, Ventric Fletcher, Curtis Ford, Chastity Gorey, Taylor Jean Lewis, Bridget Jones, Denzel Lewis, Jeffrey Sims, and George Stubbs. I'd also like to thank Mr. Herb Courtney from Renaissance Search and Consulting. Uh, for his assistance throughout this process, as well as Rock Nation uh, for helping us to push forward uh, this new era of Gramlin State University Tiger football. In the decades that I've known this university, from the time of my youth in North Baton Rouge, I can vividly recall attending my first Value Classic at the age of five years old, eating peanuts in the terrace section of the Louisiana Superdome. I can also vividly remember watching the legendary Eddie Robinson coach his last Bayou Classic in 1997. From that point on, the coaches who followed him continued to uphold the championship pedigree that is Gramlin. On the day I was named athletic director, and every day since, we've sought to continue that legacy by creating a holistic student athlete experience, both on and off the field, for our 300 student athletes. One thing that we know, one constant, Gramlin State University fans love a winner. I know GSU fans will love Hugh Jackson. He knows that success in football means success in the classroom and in the community. He is a professional and winner in all areas of life and a mentor to some of the best professional football players in the National Football League. The Los Angeles, California native has over 30 years of experience in the coaching ranks most notably teaching and developing Heisman Trophy winners and NFL Pro Bowl players. Hugh, while coaching at the University of Southern California, was responsible for recruiting quarterbacks Carson Palmer and Matt Leiner, both of whom went on to win the 2002 and 2004 Heisman Trophies, respectfully. At the professional level, Hugh coached nearly 20 years, 20 players, excuse me, to the NFL Pro Bowl. As the wide receivers coach for the Cincinnati Bengals, Hugh coached Chad Johnson, otherwise Josinko, and TJ Huchmanzada into becoming one of the best receiving tandems in the National Football League. In 2005, Hugh helped guide the Bengals to the AFC North title and a playoff berth for the first time in 15 years. During a three-year span, Chad Johnson was a three-time NFL Pro Bowl player. In addition to his success in Cincinnati, Hugh played a prominent role in the development of future Super Bowl champion Joe Flacco as position coach during his rookie season. Hugh's accolades speak for themselves as he was a 2015 PW, PFWA NFL Assistant Coach of the Year and a 2019 Harvard University Global Catalyst Humanitarian Award recipient. Hugh isn't just a leader on the field, 
but a champion off of it as he and his wife Michelle are co-founders of the Hugh Jackson Foundation, which is committed to empowering children, teens, and adults through awareness, education, and the prevention of human trafficking while assisting survivors and their families in their journey through recovery and survivorship. It is with great pleasure that we stand here today to announce the 14th head coach in the Gramlin State University football program, Coach Hugh Jackson. Join me in welcoming Coach Jackson to the stage. What a tremendous turnout. Um, I want to begin by thanking President Gallo for his vision and passion for Grambling State University. His commitment to leadership in this community are without question, and I am honored to be working with him as we advance the mission of this great institution to transcend barriers. I also want to thank Dr. Scott, wow, for the countless hours, because believe me, there was countless hours of discussions as we shared our common desire to position our student athletes for success and excellence on and off the field. Thank you to Coach Fobbs and Coach Graves for instilling the pride in winning in the Grambling State Tigers football program. With a SWAC championship title, two celebration bowl appearances, and Coach Graves leading the Grambling State Tigers in the Bayou Classic to a 24th win against Southern University, has given me a team rich in pride for its multiple successes. We look forward to your continued support as we continue the tradition of wins. There's no greater tradition of wins than that of two of Grambling's greatest that I owe a great deal of gratitude and respect to, who are instrumental in me being here today. James Shaq Harris has done more than breakthrough barriers, like being the first black player to start a season at quarterback in the history of pro football. Then went on being inducted into the SWAC Hall of Fame, the Grambling Hall of Fame, the Louisiana Hall of Fame, the National Quarterback Hall of Fame, and was named Pro Bowl MVP, was the director of pro personnel at the Baltimore Ravens in 2003 when the team won the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 35. But don't be fooled, Shaq was far from finished, even after all those accomplishments. Doug Williams was not only a player here at Grambling, he was also the head coach here. After retiring from playing professional football, Doug knew the challenges that faced black athletes in spite of the fact that he was the first black quarterback taken in the first round of the NFL draft, only starting quarterback in the NFL during his time with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Doug's impressive history also includes a Super Bowl championship, an MVP, College Football Hall of Fame inductee, 80 greatest, greatest Redskins, Washington Ring of Fame, Tampa Bay Stadium Kiru of Honor, Tampa Bay Buccaneers Ring of Honor, and obviously the all-rookie team. And in the case of both these gentlemen didn't deserve enough personal gratitude, and acknowledgement, they are also co-founders of the Black College Football Hall of Fame. Football is a team sport, 
and I'm grateful to have President Gallo and Dr. Scott leading our team, but I also want to thank the team that will continue to be a part of my journey no matter where I go. Tennessee State University, President Dr. Glenda Glover, Athletic Director Mickey Allen, Head Coach Eddie George, and the entire coaching staff and team. It was my experience that gave me the desire to do more in the HBCU environment. The experience at Tennessee State was outstanding. There are many others who have been part of my journey that I would like to thank from every coach that I've had the pleasure to work with to every player who trusted me to be part of their growth. But with over 30 years of coaching experience, I would need a few hours to name them all. So instead, I will simply say thank you. What each of you gave me and shared with me will always be part of who I am. To Mike Loxley and the National Coalition of Minority Football Coaches, thank you for running with the ball on behalf of the minority football coaches. Let's continue to put numbers on the board for all the men of color. And to all of those who have supported me in public behind the scenes, and there was countless people, thank you. And that is not enough. When the cameras were gone and everyone had left the building, you never wavered in your friendship and support and always continued the journey with me. I want to specifically thank my friend and agent, John Thornton, as a former defensive lineman for the Cincinnati Bengals while I was coaching there. John comes with a perspective of a businessman and a player in the league. Being a part of JC's family at Rock Nation makes this relationship even more special. Lastly, I want to thank my family. For those who don't know, I was born in South Central Los Angeles, but was named after a street just a few miles from here in Bastrop, okay, Louisiana, where my parents met and married. I still have family here in Louisiana. Some of them have worked for the university here at Gramlin State University. We all know the roots run deep in the HBCU history. And Gramlin has been a part of that history for over 120 years. I am honored to be part of the Gramlin family as the 14th head coach of the Gramlin State Tigers football team. I am also excited to add a new and exciting chapter to this history and to this great institution. In the words of President Gallo, where everybody is somebody. Thank you very much. At this time, we will open the interview portion of the press conference to the members of the media. If you have a question, please step forward and uh, name, affiliation, and introduce yourself to Coach Jackson. The first thing I want to bring to Gramlin State here in my first year is a winning environment and a winning football team. So I want to go back a little bit, and I know I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about this, but Coach Robinson and that family, I, what, they, what they've done here, if I can just be a little bit of what he did here at Grambling. Now, I don't have uh, 56 years left in me. You know, maybe not 408 victories, but I guarantee you we're going to start trying to, to scratch some victories as fast as we can. And, and with that being the first thing you want to do, what kind of goes into that? Because you have a lot of success in the college ranks. Mm -hmm. I was kind of mentioned all the different players you recruited. So what kind of goes into kind of growing that environment here? Well, the first thing you do to grow that environment, you got to have the right staff. It starts with the staff that we're going to put together. And then it starts by get, our staff getting to know our players. And not just getting to know our players as football players, but getting to know our players as people. And understanding how we can impact them and add value to them as coaches and be real leaders in their lives. And then with all the coaches, excuse me, with all the players that you've coached in the past, um, you mentioned Carson Palmer, Ocho Cinco, um, is there any way to kind of use them as recruiting help to kind of- Oh, absolutely. Now they can't get on the phone. There's rules. <laughs> there's rules we can't break, but there's no question that those guys, there's, I, I know for a fact that they'll do anything that they can do within the rules. 
uh, to help Grambling get to where it needs to be from a player standpoint. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Hey, Coach. My name is AJ Howell from Channel 8 in Monroe. What is your message to recruits and your future players at this point? Come to Grambling. Why not Grambling State University? This is going to be the place to be. I guarantee you that. There's going to be some exciting football played here. We're going to graduate our student athletes. They're going to have a chance to be in an institution that is second to none, become great football players, become great people within the community, and go out and do something great with their lives. Come to Gremlin State. Second, there's been a lot of talk on social media when they found out that you were the coach. A lot of people, not necessarily Grambling fans, are excited to see such a well-known face coming to an HBCU. How important are coaches like you, Deion Sanders, bringing attention to HBCUs? Well, I think the landscape's changing. You know, obviously, um, you mentioned uh, Eddie George and Deion. They're doing a great job in their prospective places. Uh, we want to do the same here and do it even better. And I think... Uh, why not HBCUs? Why would you not come here and have an opportunity to play some of the greatest football that I think is still being played anywhere? Now, I know everybody talk about the Power Fives, but there's nothing like HBCU football. How you doing, Coach Jackson? Uh, Jorian Dupree, chemistry undergrad, Eunice, Louisiana. Uh, what, you know, what type of relationship do you look to build with the students, you know, as far as us being, you know, the at-home fans and the community? We need our students. Our students are just as important as they're an important fiber of our football team because that's who our players are. They're students as well. So we want to build that relationship with our students. I, I want to do so much more and have our students be involved with our team. Come on, be a manager, be a, a manager for us. Come help in the equipment room, come help out on the field. I think that's so important so that our students can see exactly what our players go through on a daily basis. Thank you and good luck. Good morning, Coach. Uh, Good morning. Ethan Sands, the new star. My question is, you have a lot of talented players on your roster already, and it's also coming up on the early signing period. Who are you looking to go recruit, and what kind of players are you hoping to bring to Grambling? Well, obviously, we want to uh, recruit players that first have the opportunity to come here and be great students, um, be G-men, uh, have an opportunity to be on our football team and understand the culture that we're building. Obviously, we're looking for talent, but talent is not what wins all the time. You've got to be a great team member. You've got to be a guy that understands how to follow rules. Uh, we're looking for guys that are disciplined, determined, that have great desire, and they have dedication to the sport, but not just the sport, but also in the classroom. As was mentioned earlier, you have some expertise with quarterbacks. There were a multiple amount of quarterbacks played this year. Do you have any ideas of who you're looking forward to working with and what you want to work on with them when you get into the training camp portion of the process? Well, I think it's a little early um, to, to really dive into that. Obviously, there are some talented players here. I need to go uh, and watch them and, and get to know them. But at the same time, we're going to recruit. You know, we're going to recruit players that have a chance to come in and, and compete right away. Uh, some people develop fast and some people develop slow, but we're going to create the right environment for that quarterback position to be all it can be. I just talked about two of the greatest uh, people in Gramlin's Hall, I mean, that has ever played here, and they both were quarterbacks. So we want to go recruit guys like Shaq Harris and Doug Williams, that's for sure. Thank you. Hi, Coach. My name is Dominique Williams from NBC10 and Fox 14 in Monroe. And question here, we see a trend that are saying that they want more black head coaches to be in positions and opportunities. So what does it mean for you to be a black man and be in this position now to show uh, across the nation? It means for me that I have to do a great job of, of giving back um, because somebody gave me an opportunity when I was a young coach. Um, to ascend. Uh, I think you guys know the history of the National Football League. There's only been 19 minority co uh, head coaches in a 101-year history, and I did it twice. So my job is to make sure that I find the next Hugh Jackson, 
and create that environment for him so that he can be all he can be as well. And what are some words you can share to the young high school um, athletes that are looking up to people like you for opportunities to come play for a coach like you as well? That, come on, come here. Come to this environment because we're going to make it great. That we're going to do everything we can to help you chase every goal and aspiration that you have um, in the classroom as well as on the football field. And that what we're going to do here is we're going to grow winners on the field and off the field. Thank you. Thank you. With, with no more further questions, this concludes our press conference. Again, thank you for everybody coming out, and I hope you have a wonderful day.